Hello, I'm Lisa Campbell, editor of Broadcast. Welcome to our broadcast interview in which we talk to BBC Two controller Roly Keating about his new autumn lineup. You can view his programming highlights by clicking the link below. This autumn on two, we've tried to, you know, continue to break new ground, but also bring back some old favourites, bring in some new talent, keep the best possible mix of really hard hitting factual series, big documentaries. Uh, some strong single dramas and a few surprises in the mix as well. On the factual side, um, one of the big centrepiece films is The Fallen. It's Morgan Matthews, who we've worked with often before, doing something completely different. He's creating a three-hour unbroken documentary which aims to record and remember every single British serviceman and woman who's lost their lives in the last seven years on active service in Iraq and Afghanistan. Then in, uh, in other, other big factual adventure series, probably the highlight is um, Bruce Parry. His fans will be pleased to know that after nine months coming down the full length of the Amazon, he's back, he's safe and sound. It's not tribe, it's something different. Uh, it's an unbroken journey. Um, he has to do things he's never done before. He stayed away for nine months um, without returning home. This is serious stuff. Uh, and he'll touch on everything you'll find on that journey. It's not just life sort of living with, with tribal people. He's looking at the politics of cocaine, the economic stories you encounter on route, a really rich, multi-layered series. Lawrence Rees is, is probably the best historical filmmaker of his generation, certainly when it comes to analysing what happened in World War II. And for the last three years, he's been working on this series, World War II Behind Closed Doors which tries to finally tell the true story of what really happened between Churchill, Stalin and Roosevelt. And then completely different again, um, the current affairs team have teamed up, I suppose you might say, with the history department. They've commissioned Simon Sharma to follow the US election trail. So Simon's had to act a little bit, half like a reporter, half like a historian, based on the idea that you can only really understand what's going on in America at the moment, what's at stake in this election if you see what it means in historical terms. Why um, is America preoccupied with war? What does that mean? How does religion play into American society? What about wealth and the land of plenty and the land of opportunity? What are the historical roots of that? And Simon's brilliantly placed to do that. He's a great TV communicator. He's lived in America for 30 years, but he's British to his fingertips. He understands what British audiences need to know to understand America. And that kind of hybrid between genres is just the kind of thing we're trying to do. There are two very different personal authored documentaries uh, on the channel this autumn. Griff Rees Jones um, is talking very candidly about anger, which is a very common problem. Uh, lots of people find it hard to control their temper. Um, sometimes it gets out of control. As a society, there's lots of talk at the moment about are we getting more angry as a society and why is that, what does that mean? And Griff, Griff who is known, he will admit, for losing it occasionally. He's doing a, a, a two-part series called Losing It, where he talks fairly openly uh, about his own issues, if they are issues, with, with anger and gets friends and family to talk pretty openly about that, but also broadens it out to ask other people about their experiences and tries to touch on something which is, is not, as it were, an extreme mental issue, but actually is something that a lot of us, a lot of people suffer from. And I think, I think it'll attract a lot of interest and a lot of uh, uh, wide audience. Very different is um, Prescott on, on class, where we've got the former Deputy Prime Minister, John Prescott, to analyse the British class system, which is something he has very strong opinions about. He's himself a former cruise ship steward who rose to the second highest office in the land, presided you know, in his time in, in power over a period of immense social change in the UK, but still personally feels there's a lot of unfinished business in the British class system and he wants to do a personal journey, a personal investigation about why that is, what it means, and of course what it means for him and his family. I don't think you, you need, as it were, famous names to, to raise issues. We would only work with some of these big signature names when it's authentic, when it, in each case actually it's the talent themselves who come up with something that they're burning to ask and it's felt true and we've always asked the question, is there something in themselves that makes them uniquely qualified to do it? And if that's true, then you've got real documentary truth to it. We're trying to break new talent. Just this week, Ching Hei Huang's had a huge hit with Chinese Food Made Easy. I'm really proud. That's from nowhere. She's now found a really big audience. 
This autumn you'll see Valentine Warner taking centre stage with uh, What to Eat Now, great new passionate broadcaster on food and nutrition. So constantly, yes, trying to kind of work with established talent on the one hand and break new names all the time as well. In drama, we've got some uh, really strong single drama, single plays, in fact, coming to the channel this season. Uh, Einstein and Eddington is written by Peter Moffat. It's just a huge hit on BBC One with Criminal Justice. This could not be more different. This is, in some ways, a kind of sequel to the film we did on Stephen Hawking some years ago, where we discovered actually the drama behind great science is sometimes completely riveting as a human story. And here, Peter's tracked down the tale of Einstein during World War II and the relationship he struck up with a British scientist, um, uh, Eddington. And Eddington's played by uh, David Tennant, uh, and Einstein is Andy Serkis, which is an explosive combination, and I think that'll have a, 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 um, a big impact when it comes through. David Hare, um, whose work we haven't seen on television for ages, I'm really thrilled we've got My Zinc Bed, which is an adaptation of a stage play he did. Um, a very intense chamber drama brought to life with astonishing performances from Jonathan Price, Paddy Considine and Uma Thurman, um, who are names you don't always get on BBC Two, but I think they were attracted just by the quality and intensity of that script. We keep ringing the changes on BBC Two and experimenting, and that's something we're doing this season. And as ever, you, you, you see how it works, how it feels, but I wouldn't rule anything out. But I think what we try to do is make sure all the different creative shapes of drama are represented. In other words, single original plays for TV, occasional adaptations, uh, and of course, the constructed author-led serial. Um, we've just got Burn Up coming up soon on BBC Two this season, House of Saddam, uh, and beyond that next winter, there'll be other serials coming through as well, alongside what's now a really strong diet of, uh, of US drama as well. Well, Indians can get involved in all, all parts of the channel, but I mean, we're a very factual dominated schedule. So I mean, I suppose if I were to focus on, on one area, it's, I suppose that constantly reinvigorating that what I would loosely call specialist factual heart of the channel and I mean that really really broadly that includes hobbies aspects of people's everyday lives real specialist information but brought to life in innovative ways we're, we're, we are interested in formats but they've got to feel different they've got to have something um, unpredictable about them I think our audience are very impatient of too much predictability in the mix um, and we're also a very, very talent-focused channel, and a lot of what I often say to producers is, bring me the person who's behind this, either off or on screen, who's gonna make that difference, make that edge, and contribute to our on-screen talent roster on BBC Two, who typically are quite individualistic, quite memorable, sometimes a little eccentric, whatever their generation, but full of knowledge and enthusiasm. Uh, and that's what we're always looking for. All you can ever say about comedy is that we're really proud of them, and there are two gems coming up, I think, this, uh, this season. Uh, there's The Cup from Hartswood Films, um, which is all about a children's football team uh, and the mad, driven, obsessive parents who lurk behind the scenes egging the children on. And then, curiously, also focusing on growing up, but from a completely uh, different perspective, is Beautiful People by Jonathan Harvey. It's loosely based on the memoirs of uh, Simon Doonan about his childhood growing up in, in the UK. We transposed it to 1990s Reading, and it's about an 11 to 12 year old kid just coming to terms with his identity, thinking there's more to life than the world he sees around him. I hope the new season says that the channel's alive and well, it's confident, it's bursting with talent and ideas, um, it's continuing to innovate, but it's also bringing back a lot of the great faces that people know and love.